All right, it's time to talk about all the fun and exciting things going down this week in Reddit. And wow, woo, there were some heated discussions. A lot of people are a lot of unhappy with this team right now, Case. And um, I'm not sure <laughs> I'm... I, there's some surprises. Okay, I can, I can say that. There's some things that we absolutely saw coming. And this is Lions football, so I'm not I, I'm not sure where this wild juxtaposition is that people have. But let's talk about it. Let's start in by talking about this Raiders game because I think there was a lot of triggers for people here, and I think some of them might be well founded, and maybe some of them aren't. How about you? Where's your head at? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's not that I don't understand the frustration. It's it, it truly isn't. But um, and I know I know how much our listeners love it when I uh, say I told you so. But um, we're headed for approximately an eight and eight record. As I've said, you know, we can't exactly get there unless we uh, if we tie again, we can get to a 500 record. But, you know, we can't technically get to an eight and eight record. That was my prediction pre start of the year how we've gotten to this point isn't exactly how i would have written it out that's for sure i would not have expected our offense to take off quite this much and for our defense to fail quite this much but i also you know as i've said a million times as uh, god i know i love it Uh, you all love it when i say how much i was right about things but um (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> just get past um, it so people can get past it. I can't I can't <laughs> predict I can't I can't predict and you can't predict and no one can predict who's going to get hurt and who's going to be playing injured and and what health impact is going to have on the team. If you I mean I mean look at the injury report between the Bears and the Lions. I'm still predicting the Lions win this game against the Bears. But look at the injury reports for both teams. Yeah. yeah They've got two guys on their injury report and neither of them are significant. And we've got what um, five, six starters, and the rest of the guys on the team uh, that are on the injury report are all significant rotation players. I mean, it is it's it's not you know unsurprising that they're having a little bit of difficulty overcoming that situation. Um, one of the most interesting things for me over the last two weeks has been Trey flowers emergence. And, um, he got mad and green. We didn't, he got I, I don't mad. think we, right. No. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, I don't think we knew as a fan base and I would love to have more insider information. So, you know, we'll, it, as time goes on and we know more people, um, <laughs> we'll know more and more. But uh, I don't think anybody knew that Trey Flowers was as limited as he was um, during the first half of the season. Mm -hmm. He's finally breaking out. And and when and now that he's breaking out, we're seeing very positive things from him. And I think that's, you know, uh, that is something to watch going forward to see, you know, how he finishes off the year because how he finishes off this year could very well carry into next year. Yeah. Um, but wonder- if we're looking at, at one of the many things, many things that has limited this defense, it's that he was not performing up to 100% through the first half of the year. Sure. Um, I'd, like, it take- I'd like to make a point, though, um, about the team yeah, go ahead. and where people are and the record. And we all know that the W's are the most important thing. Right. That's that's how you define a team every year is by how many wins they got. We had six wins last year with the team and we and we did what we did. Um this year we'll probably have two more wins. We'll add two more wins to the to the to the stack, maybe you know, maybe one more and seven wins or you know, it's seven or eight. But I want to talk about how those games have been played. And we talked a little bit about it in the, the post game show this week. Uh didn't need to talk about it much with Case though. How many games have we absolutely lost? Meaning, were we blown out? Right. No, no, absolutely. We That's were a good in point. every single game this season except one. Yeah. We could have won yeah. every game except one. So, while the W's aren't in the column where we want them to be, this is absolutely yep. an improved team in a division right now 
Oh it's God, a yes! Screaming oh, God, tough yes. division. So if, if you, people just yeah. want to point at the W's and just want to look at that, you're absolutely taking everything that this team has accomplished and how it's grown out of context, and you're actually showing a little bit of a lack of your kind of view of the bigger picture of this team. I'll let you. Talk okay, about. so you and I are going to turn a lot of people off if we say that the way you just said it, and and I mean I like do that, that doesn't me. bother me, but. Um, <laughs> This, this I mean, you and I are going to turn a lot of people off regardless, <laughs> but um, might be the no pants thing. <laughs> we're, we're OCD. As soon as we turn somebody on, we have to go ahead and turn them off again. <laughs> but um, uh, <laughs> um, the point being, <laughs> there is a lot about this team that isn't functioning the way we want it to, the way we hope it will. Okay, Mm -hmm. so by saying that things could be worse or that things aren't quite as bad as, you know, the strict record would suggest, um, I I think a lot of a lot of people who listen casually will assume that means we are making excuses. Um, And when people say, you know, making excuses, they think, you know, uh, that that there is no valid, you know, reason that any of this could have happened okay it, it, it is not please 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 if, if that is you and you are listening right now and you are thinking that we are he- sitting here saying we are happy with where the team is oh no no, no we're not no, no, no. We're, we're very much not we're very upset <laughs> that it is uh three four and one and not a winning record when it yep. very easily could have been a winning record and we're upset that the team isn't quite stepping up in the areas not that we closing. want them to step up yep. in yep. um so so i understand that you hearing us say reasons why we can understand why this thing or that thing or the other thing isn't quite going as well as we want it to sounds like homerism but really, truly, that's that's not it. What we're coming at it from is trying to look at every angle. And if all we said, all we said to all of you every week was, "Here's everything terrible about the about this team. There's nothing. There's nothing. No glimmer of hope. Uh, there's no reason to hang your hat on a uh, on a uh, more complicated look. A more um, intricate look at why things aren't perfect then what do we have to talk about if if we literally just go by okay we lost this week and now the lines are terrible if that's all we talk about nobody has any reason to listen to you Uh, if that's all we have to say why is anybody listening so So let me let me jump into a topic on trying to give context Trying to give context to what's going right and and what's going wrong. Yep. Yeah. Let me jump into one of the topics we want to talk about because there's three specific areas of this uh, of this Raiders game that we wanted to talk about, and um, this this is a great segue from what you said, Case. Um, people are just bagging on the defense, just absolutely bagging on it, right? And and, and, then and they're not wrong to be upset. It's a blind bag, though, in so many ways, right? It's an easy, just to say, yeah. oh, this defense sucks. Oh, they let out you know, so many yards. What, let's take a minute, though. Let's let's think about this, okay? And I want I want us, again, we're not saying that this is, that there's there's no problems here, but there's something about this defense that, that people don't think about and didn't think about. When we walked into this game, ahead of this Raiders game, everybody said it was going to be a shootout. This was a test of two offenses that were going to run the the score high. Mm -hmm. So the fact that they scored a lot of points against us and we scored a lot of points means we were kind of right about that. It doesn't mean our defense was bad. We knew the offenses were going to put up a, a bunch of points. Okay, so to say now we put up they put up so many points we couldn't stop them. We knew that was going to happen. That's what a shootout is. We predicted it. Everyone predicted it. I mean, I'm not saying look at us. We were right. I'm saying everybody predicted a shootout. So so let's not get so freaked out about how many points were scored. Right. We knew it was going to be who got the ball ass, who, you know, that kind of a game. Also, we were facing Josh Jacobs, who's the number one back in the NFL right now. In case I want you to talk about this, I want to talk about how did you know, how did we do against Josh Jacobs? And how did we compare against other teams 
have played against the Raiders this year defensively? Because I think that provides a little bit of context for folks who just said the defense lost us the game. We sucked. If this had been like week three and we faced Josh Jacobs and he put up the performance that he put up against us, I would say, oh, yeah, well, there's a good chance as an anomaly uh, based on how bad our run defense is. Uh, but no, I mean, this was actually um, only yeah. slightly above standard performance for uh, uh, Josh Jacobs. We actually held him to, I think it was a yard and a half lower than his season average in rushing yards. Yep. So there is this sense that if your team isn't elite in a category, they're bad. Um, our, our run defense is not good. Is not good. Don't do not please do not misunderstand me. Don't come at me on Twitter about saying that our D, our run defense is good. At they're not. Lions. But they actually did uh, comparatively to the rest of the teams that have faced Josh Jacobs this year. They did an okay job. How about Green Bay? How did Green Bay do? <laughs> I mean, do? how are you how how else are you supposed to how else am I supposed to judge a team other than comparing them to what other teams did against the same player? How did Green Bay do? The the number 1 team in the division who's got this this just stellar defense. How did they do against Josh Jacobs? Do you know? Um hang on one second I can find it. I thought you had it there. I, I, I we, we may have I set did, this up a little. No, 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 no. <laughs> hang on, hang on. I literally have it right here. It was okay. So, yeah, no. Uh, they allowed four more yards on seven fewer carries. They didn't allow him to get any touchdowns. That was the big difference. We okay. allowed two touchdowns. Okay. So I get that. I get that. That's a big difference. But they allowed 5.9 yards per carry, where we only allowed 4.3. Wait, but so, our run defense. I mean, my run defense. My run defense. So, I mean, that, that's what I mean. You know, compare yourself in any situation to everybody else. Yeah. And see and how you did against in that this same situation. We didn't drastically underperform where other teams who are not facing this kind of criticism about their defense, you know, mm -hmm. how they played. Exactly. Okay. So comparatively, we look, we weren't superstars. We didn't, you know, shut the team down. No, we, we weren't. We, we were think we, we absolutely would. weren't superstars. We didn't think we would. We said it was going to be a shootout. Everyone said it was going to be a shootout, but comparatively, we weren't a bundle of crap compared to everyone else who's played this team. Mm -hmm. Maybe there's something to this Raiders team, this Raiders offense, right? Maybe there is something to that. I definitely think there is. And I think it's probably, you know, every year I kind of have like the one team that I was most wrong about. And I think the Raiders are probably that team this year. Sure. All right. Let's go about the, let's talk about our running game. Let's move over to the, the other side of the ball. We had Trey Carson out who, you know, after one game, right? But after his one game performance, he looked like he was going to bring something Something good to this team, I thought. Flashed. I, yeah, Flashed. yeah, he, he certainly did. I thought he uh, he might be a, a, a good addition to help us out. And then you go from him, KJ's out, Karyon Johnson is out, right? And um, let's see, practice squad player Paul Perkins in a premier back role um, played not quite perfectly. There we go. Uh, Paul Perkins out there um, did his, his own thing. So let's talk about that game. How do we do in the running game, Case? It's still not good. <laughs> it's still not good. Uh, the The thing is, um, I'm not sure if if I'm confused right now about how they should go about trying to fix the defense, and I am. Um, I'm not exactly sure what needs to happen, other than everybody getting healthy. Which I mean, how do you how do you get that many guys healthy? Um, it's it's about how to fix the run game, and it it, it is almost entirely a scheme slash offensive line issue. Mm -hmm. Even carry on Johnson, who I think is extremely talented back when he's healthy was having a rough start of the year in terms of uh, comparative to last year in his yards per carry and all that kind of stuff. It, 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 it almost makes a hundred percent sense what they're doing right now in that they're just picking up, whoever whoever mm -hmm. whoever has fresh legs yeah. just 
sign them, put them up. If they get hurt, no friggin' big deal. Move on to the next guy. Yep. Um, the, the, the run offense is, you know, where, where, um, there were a few good runs, a few gains of like nine, 10, 11 yards in this last game. Um, and credit to the offensive scheme, I think primarily when those did happen as opposed to the actual players themselves, because I don't think there is that much talent to, uh, you know, credit in that group. But, uh, it, as long as they can do a few of those things every game, then they continue to use the play action effectively. And that is the, even if the run game sucks, if you can have a few successful run plays every game, you can continue to use the play action. Yep. And that is, to me, the most important part of the offense. Yeah, absolutely. That's where Matthew Stafford excels. So uh, run game was the run game and uh, no big deal. I want to talk about something though, Case, where, because I love, you know how I love poking you. And uh, I also love giving you a hard time. Um, Marvin Jones this Jesus. week. <laughs> um Really had a down week compared uh, to week before. Only one touchdown, and uh, I know that stings a little bit, my friend. Uh, being a big Marvin Jones fan, is uh, are you are you feeling like his season's over here? Yeah, uh, totally. Uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> there's no bounce back here at all. Um, <laughs> no, I, I man, I. It's not even about the uh, self congratulation on this one. I'm just happy because I love the dude. Wait, you only got dude. one touchdown though. How would you self congratulate? Is it down the week, uh, continued continued uh, 124 yard uh, game? Uh, something oh. like that. Something. Oh. Uh, it was close to that. Oh, okay. I got it. I got it here somewhere. But anyway, he had another big game uh, yardage wise. Uh, that that uh, contested catch thing continues to be his bread and butter. And boy, is he good at it. He is so good at coming down those. That, that, that what was it, a 48, 49 yard? And you can see, you can reception. feel oh, God. the, the uh, so chemistry with him it's and Matthew so Stafford. You can it's just so good. feel. It's so good. Matthew, like like Matthew um, used to be able to do with Calvin, put him in a position to go get a ball. He can't do the same thing, but he knows that Ma- right. Marvin's coming up with that. And I think both he and uh, I think both he and Galladay are on similar footing. Like I think Matthew trusts both of them in those situations at this point, and so you go with the guy who's got the better uh, situation. Well, and, that confidence and that is one hundred percent great, and both of them are on pace for over a thousand yards again. Yeah. And uh, I think the only other team in the league who's likely to have two players go over a thousand yards is um, the Bucks. So interesting, interesting. The Bucks of all people. Okay, Chris Godwin, who came out of nowhere, but yeah, yeah. No, that's that, that's it. So that's a look at the the Lions against the Raiders. I feel like um, while it was lost, again, it was one we were in really till the till the end. Um, oh yeah, it's a game. Hundred percent. We were that, those. Yeah, I mean those that was hurt, not a right I disgraceful mean, loss. A, a loss always hurts. These these continued close losses yep. they have their own kind of a pain associated with them. Right, and, uh, right, for sure. It's for no sure. good. It's it's no good. It's no good to have that pain in your life. But it is the fact of being a Lions fan. Face it. Um, if you, if you were a fan in two thousand and eight, if that's what got you to be a fan, that own sixteen year, you had to know what you're signing up for. You just, you just had to, you know, I mean, this is, don't be, don't be upset and surprised about this. I, I believe that this coach in this uh, front office needs more time. Um, the thing, this is such a lion's thing to do historically. I want to talk about that real quick. Sure, sure. No. Historically, such a lion's thing to do is to give up on a coach too early or a, uh, well, the front office. Um, we know we talk yep. about William Clay being so happy about folks, but we hired a rookie head coach and a rookie GM. And you think about that, and uh, you think about how the Bear, the Browns did that with Bill Belichick. Am I saying that either of these guys are Bill Belichick? No, but you don't know. They're rookies. They're in, you know, Quinn's in his third year, his second year with a coach that he wants. His coach has finally gotten the in, – in, he had is in his second year, and he finally got the offensive coordinator that he wants. Um, you still don't really have the defensive coordinator, I don't think, that um, Matt Patricia wants. And I think mm-hmm. that's the case because he had a hire so late, and he was already flipping the offensive coordinator. He just wanted the, the um, 
steadiness on the side of the defensive side of the ball. I think this is a, a longer term thing to see. And what you have to look at is, is it working? Not in the W column yet. I'm going back to this, but this team is performing at a higher level. This offense is way better than it had been the year before. Huge increase uh, in productivity and the number of points are being scored by this team. This is a good, fun, dynamic offense. It looks like, I hate to say it, it looks like a professional football team offense. Um, On the defensive side, I bet, I (laughs) bet you see changes this year that put the people that Mr. Patricia wants in place and you start seeing the plan really coming together. But this stuff doesn't happen right away. And there's one other piece and I'll hand it off to you, Casey, so you can go into that. Mm-hmm. the the roster that this team had when Bob Quinn took over it, we 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 talked about it with Trav on the post game show um this roster had a couple of stars and nobody else we had no depth we had really crappy players across the board we're in a position now where we've put good players in positions across the board and we have some depth in a lot of places we're seeing a lot of things happen Darius Slay went out We didn't have a massive implosion in the secondary. You know, your best player's gone. You would expect some kind of implosion like that. We didn't see that. didn't happen. Um, We've seen a lot of players go down. We're still playing at a pretty good level. Think about how many guys are missing on the defense or went out during the game, and we still played um, better than most teams played against the Raiders. Um, Where we're lacking right now is those couple of stars, and I bet we'll start seeing those next year and the year after, and we'll probably rotate some of those guys as as the years go on from there. But you you build the foundation. You build the context of the greater team so that everybody can play well, and then you pick up the stars that are difference makers, and that's when your team will propel itself. If you, you can do like the Bears did and spend a whole lot of money on a Khalil Mack and have, wow, a really good defense, but you're not winning games. And there you go. I'll leave it to you for that, for the last word, Case. Well, and the funny thing is, like, as much as I have been the guy uh, on this podcast from the moment I thought Matt Patricia was the guy I wanted, uh, probably what was it two and a half years ago that I that I started talking about Matt Patricia and he, I so. that I thought he was the guy that I wanted as our next head coach uh, because I didn't believe in Jim Caldwell. Um, there is a perception that that makes me think that he can do no wrong. And that is very much not true. He has so much to prove. He has so much to prove. I am far, a hundred percent far from convinced that he is going to be able to make this thing work. But okay. If you take the position of something doesn't work within two years, uh, doesn't take you to the Super Bowl or even to the playoffs within two years, that it's not worth pursuing. Burn it down. That's what I hope the Titans are doing. I want Mike Rabel as a A lot of teams. A lot of teams. Shit. The Browns. Yeah are rumored that they're going to fire their head coach. They were Super Bowl contenders this year, this year remember? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> How many teams have we seen go through the exact same thing where they just don't have any patience at all? And it, again, I, I, please, 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 if you're listening, don't misunderstand this as me saying I'm not frustrated with where things are. I want them to be better. And I want I want every draft pick that Bob Quinn has ever picked to be a pro bowler. Okay? But if you want to look through Bob Quinn's entire draft history, yes, there are some misses. I I'm uh, once again, I'm not going to argue that. Has misses, I think Jared has Davis is on very thin ice. Agreed. Very, very thin ice. Agreed. Um, but at the same time, there have also been some good things out there. Tracy Walker, if he's not injured, he's you know, the heir apparent to the Glover Quinn and he was playing great and he played great last year and he, you know, everything is good there. Uh, Will Harris has, you know, been stepping it up. Uh, he's not the best in pass coverage, but in other ways, he has also been an important player. Kenny Galladay. Are you talking about value? You want to talk about value? 
Kenny Galladay. Can we talk about that? <laughs> uh, Frank Ragnow is, is per PFF, you know, however you choose to accept PFF and that is on you, um, is having a great year. It's not like Bob Quinn is not drafting good players at all. And you have to, once again, compare him to the rest of the league. Uh, sometimes you're going to have a guy, have a GM who gets lucky. <laughs> and I know people hate placing any blame on uh, or fortune on luck, but uh, sometimes you'll get lucky and sometimes you'll get a few guys who really work out. Um, and sometimes you won't. That's part and, of it though. Luck uh, is definitely but, a part but, of it. But Bob Quinn is not well below average. There, I, anybody who wants to come at me and try to tell me that Bob Quinn is well below average on, on his draft picks, come at me because I will fight you with every statistic I, I can come up with on that. That he is, I mean, he's not elite. Not, he's not picking every draft pick he's picking is a hit. I'm not going to try to argue with that. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. That's a bullshit. But, okay. So Bob Quinn is. Okay. Not incredible. Okay. Matt Patricia is okay. Not incredible. Okay. And we have to see it. No, no. Okay. Okay. Let me, let me put this this way. If the team gets healthier as the year finishes and the defense can't improve that will be an indictment that I will take very seriously. And even even though even though you know very well that Matt Patricia was my guy, he was the one I wanted long before uh, it was a popular pick. If he can't find a way to improve on what this defense is doing over the second half of the season, my trust in him will go significantly down but i don't think that means it's time to move on until you've given it a full run and every single every single head coach should get three years yeah minimum and minimum yeah all right so that's good we'll go on from there we'll uh take it to the next step the next stop though is to talk about that sweet sweet life and uh, a couple contests we have going on um this one, hashtag too sweet. How would you like to join Sandman and I in a suite at Ford Field to watch the Dallas Cowboys take on the Detroit Lions at home? Is there a hot tub? There, there could be some toasters and hot tubs afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> so what, how's, how, how, do, how do I get a piece of this action, you may ask. One may ask themselves, and I can tell you, you don't have to consume a bag of Richards. You can just head on over to patreon.com slash Detroit Lions podcast. Join as a donator and uh, donate to the podcast. It is a great way to support us, all that kind of stuff. Every dollar you donate before the 12th of November will get you an entry into this awesome contest. Uh, I got to give much love to Sandman, Sandman in the subreddit and on Twitter at Sandman7773. YouTube, his channel, Sandman7773, um, does the slow lights and all that stuff. Everybody knows who Sandman is. He, he's the one that put the suite up and uh, put this contest together for us. It's going to be him. It's going to be I. It's going to be a couple other great people up there hanging out and having a good time. Uh, good time, party time. The only thing that isn't provided is the booze. And I have a feeling people will be buying some booze for you along the way. We're going to do a live broadcast. We're going to do a pregame show. We're going to do a halftime show. We're going to do the postgame show with your calls all live from Ford Field from the suite. And we'll talk about that Lions game. How's that sound? Does that sound like a good time? Get in. Patreon.com slash Detroit Lions podcast. Get yourself in. Every dollar you donate before the 12th of November will get you an entry to get into the suite to hang and bang and have a good time with us. Also, it doesn't end there. We still got the other party thing going with Peter Von Panda. So everyone who's a Patreon donator, if you don't win the sweet life, hashtag too sweet. Uh, you can get yourself a sweet Sega uh, retro gaming system, 43 great games. It's got Virtual Fighter. It's got Dig Dug. It's got Se uh, Sonic. Sonic 2. It's got, I mean, anything, any of the old classics, the fun stuff. Great way to unwind. Great way to have a lot of fun. It's small. It's portable. If you travel, you can take with you to the hotel anywhere and have a great, great time. Uh, second place in the contest is going to pick themselves up that Sega, courtesy of our man Peter Von Penda. 
youtube.com slash Peter Von Panda. Check out his YouTube channel. Um, reviews all kinds of amazing things. He has a great sense of humor. He's in the Slack chat as well. He, uh, he's got a great, great YouTube channel. He's a fun guy. Really, really cool. So check him out. Peter Von Panda at youtube.com slash Peter Von Panda. And uh, don't forget, that's second place. And uh, join the, the, the Patreon crew, patreon.com slash Detroit Lions podcast. All right. End of that. Let's move on. Case, I know you wanted to kind of, you, you walked in on camera today. And you were, I thought there was something wrong. I thought maybe your back hurt. I thought maybe, you know, you'd, you'd kind of done something because your knees were just like further apart than your shoulders when you're walking. I was like, what's wrong? And he's like, just ball walking, buddy. Just ball walking. You want to talk about fantasy and how great your fantasy team is and how you're so smart and all this other stuff. So I figured we'd give you a minute to just blow your hot air well, amongst other things and uh, talk about how awesome your fantasy team is so everybody if you want to man i'm fucking forward. killing it <laughs> just just hit the fast forward button it's okay <laughs> i have i literally have the top quarterback the top running back the top wide receiver and the top tight end you suck uh, i mean i mean <laughs> you got russell terrible. wilson who i picked up in like maybe the seventh or eighth round i don't, no, I don't never heard of him never heard of him i don't know uh, russell christian mccaffrey christian mccaffrey so i mean i had the i had the uh second overall pick mm-hmm. so i mean that was obvious mike evans who i took in the second round i can't believe and, he's doing uh, good he has burnt me every year that i've had him in fantasy i've had him like three years in different yep. leagues and he has just sucked eggs yep. never been able to produce and Austin Hooper, who I picked up off uh, FA early in the year. Mm. So, <laughs> so I had uh, Patrick Mahomes as my quarterback this year, amongst a number of other great players. R.I.P. That was awesome until he was gone and I got destroyed. <laughs> but no worries. I had Jared Goff as a backup who was on a bye week this week. And I was like, oh, crap. I, so I lost my, my the week. Patrick Mahomes went down the week after with Goff. I, I lost. I'm just like, come back, Patrick, please. I'm holding the picture, right? <laughs> little tear coming down. And um, with the bye week for the Rams this week, I had to pick somebody up. So I picked up lowly Jimmy Garoppolo, silly Jimmy G, and my man put up some serious points for me. I played go. some no-name bench boys and pulled out the big win. Tied for third place now on this comeback trail. Got Mahomes coming back. There you go. The there worst go. thing, though, the worst Get after it. thing, Get after it. the worst thing that happened, I'm hurting it running back. I'm, I'm like pulling these bench guys out and they're saving the day, but you can't, you can't, you can't go to that well that, you know, it's going to dry up soon. I had Kenyon Drake and then the, the game they oh said, i just picked on, him up on, last week on, but he was sitting on. on my bench when hold he went on. off so. he was on my bench on my bench on my bench and they they said he's not playing he's out and i'm like f him i can't i gotta get somebody to play so i dropped him picked someone else up two hours later they said oh kenyan drake yeah he's gonna be the premier running back for the arizona cardinals <laughs> and i'm like no uh, uh. and what what happened oh you you can't pick him up once you've dropped him he's got to clear waivers first so two hours after I dropped him is I found out why he was out and that really just stung, 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 stung. Can I can I can I tell you who two other <laughs> players I have? Fine. I have both Golden Tate and Marvin Jones. I knew you had Marvin Jones. I and mean, you picked him first round. <laughs> and they're know. doing they're doing really well. <laughs> <laughs> and then so and then we move on. Pro pick'em. Pro pick'ems. Oh, I have a lot of fun. I was in last place. You remember me lamenting my position forever and you laughed and you said, Oh yes, I just wait for people to do that and then they reach and they get even worse into a hole. Oh, not I, my friend. I stay my my course. I play my strategy. Yeah, no, I mean that's that's I've the smart way to do it. Gone man. from last to fourth place. I'm back in this, baby. I can do this. There you do. So uh, you, you go pick them pals from the Detroit Lions Podcast Fantasy League. Look out. You got tuna whiskers coming at you. <laughs> How's your pro pick this Mr. Superstar? Th- this will be this might be the first time in the last four years that I haven't finished top three in pick them in, in my pick em league. Um, and, you know, uh, I I feel like it a lot mostly of came down just this last week. This last week, I had a better week. I got I got five out of, you know, what, 12. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, if it had been a good week, I would have been, you know, out of out of the lead by, you know, maybe one or two points, and it could easily have. Come uh, right now, I think I'm sitting at like seven or eight out, that which doesn't make it impossible. There's plenty of time, and as long as, like I like you said, you know, if I stick to that strategy of just 
taking the uh, taking you? the favorite pick. Can you? Uh, or are you going to pick that one? Somebody game? else. It, 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 all it takes is other one. people to make stupid decisions. Yeah. You're yeah, sitting there yeah. saying, I just need one. I'm, I'm going to give this one a shot. I think I can. And it's going to dig you deeper every time. Every time. Yep. All right. I'm yep. done with the fantasy football. Let's get into a different kind of fairy tale. Um, the Detroit Lions playoff picture. <laughs> um, mm. Not completely out. Right. Down, but not out, not eliminated. And in a game this weekend, as we'll talk about, that they should likely win to keep those hopes alive and keep Lions fans in the seats. Um, what do you think? What's this? What's this picture look like, Case? OK, so there are four teams in the NFC right now that are more or less guaranteed to make the playoffs. Uh, that is the 49ers, the Saints, the Packers, and the Seahawks. I've heard of I that. mean, they all have eight, uh, seven or eight wins at this point. Um, they, it would not be the first time. Don't, don't mistake this. It would not be the first time uh, that, that a team had a massive collapse you know, down the stretch and lost several games and, and lost out on their you know, playoff you know, chances. Like when the, um, the, the but Lions then you move could on, have won it. You and, move uh, on after that. Sorry, go ahead. Win. Like when the Lions could have won and uh, the Packers right, just had to lose right, one. And then right, continue to right, right. And we it didn't it, it is not like that has never happened. <laughs> <laughs> no, no matter how much we want to forget about it. I feel um, in case. <laughs> you move on and there are five, uh, four, excuse me, teams who are at uh, six wins or higher. Uh, who are also uh, vying for the? In theory, there are the four teams that are vying for the the wild card spot. Mm -hmm. So uh, that is the Vikings, the Cowboys, the Rams, the Panthers. I'm oh, oh, sorry, it was five. I lied. And the Eagles. Um, the Lions sit outside of that as the next team down after those first nine. Okay, mm -hmm. that's not a great place to be. Indeed, if the Lions were to win let's say if the lions were to win their next three games that's probably unlikely but i mean let's just let's just say that they would move up into a chunk of teams that are in the you know in the top 10 vying for several wild card spots it is not impossible it is not likely but anybody who thinks at this point that they've never seen anything less likely than the Lions making the playoffs at this point has not been watching football. <laughs> <laughs> because weirder things than the Lions making the playoffs this year happen all the time. Um, I, I, I think there are very strong cases, you know, against the Eagles, against the Panthers, against the Rams, even against the Cowboys, who have faced an incredibly favorable schedule up to this point. Um, even, even the Vikings, we still face another game with the Vikings. And yes, they beat us in Minnesota, but I think that they are a beatable team by us. Um, I'm not saying we will, uh, just for the cliff notes here um, that we will be the Vikings, but uh, they are not by any means undefeatable. Even the Seahawks who are sitting at seven, two and probably almost guaranteed a playoff spot are a weaker team. So if they were to start losing games, if they were to start losing games that you think they would win, but they don't win because they're not actually as good as, as their record suggests, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I, you know me. I don't like to sit out here and, and give people false hope. I don't think the chances are high that we'll make the playoffs. But at this point in time... It's not over. It's not over. It's Was not it over, over when the Germans bombed don't, Pearl don't, Harbor? Don't, don't give up. Don't give up any hope whatsoever. I'm not saying that you should stress yourself out next Sunday. Don't schedule vacation time around the playoffs. Right, right, <laughs> right, right. No, that's exactly it. Hold open that window of 10%. <laughs> 
ten percent. Ten percent chance that things could turn themselves around. <laughs> okay. All right. No Flip big. Flip a coin five times. How many times does it end up? You know. I don't know. I think that's a statistics problem on a test I took. Well, I don't remember the answer though. All right. Now, when you're thinking about your playoff stuff, though, you do want to, you know, with that 10% chance, you do want to be a little ready. You don't want to just walk away and all of a sudden the playoffs here and, and you're, you're not ready to have any part in it. You're not ready to show your team off. So what do you do? You get your playoff gear. You get it now by going to fanatics.detroitlionspodcast.com. <laughs> <laughs> You could you could head over to fanatics.detroitlionspodcast.com and get your Michigan wear for their inevitable victory over Ohio State, or your Ohio State wear for their eventual victory over Michigan, or maybe you want to go get some Red Wings gear for their spectacular season that they've been having, or prepare for a Tigers. Any the the, the beauty of the Tigers anywhere any of your sports gear, your memorabilia, anything. Did you get that signed football this year? You want to kind of save that? They got some beautifully uh, made places to mount that football and keep it nice and safe, keep the little critters and kids off of it, all that and more available at fanatics.detroitlionspodcast.com. And the best part about doing that is it goes right to the site. You have no idea. And they give us a kickback. They support the show for sending you over. You use that link, fanatics.detroitlionspodcast.com. You head over. They know it's us that sent you there. They say, you guys are awesome. We're going to give those guys a kickback. And bada boom, bada bing, everybody's happier. The other one is Amazon, DetroitLionsPodcast.com. It's the same thing, but for Amazon, they give us a kickback when we do that. It is a love affair that we have. Amazon, DetroitLionsPodcast.com. Okay, with that being out of the way and done, we're going to talk about a little bit of a look ahead to a team named as the LOL Lol Bears. Case, this is a uh, division rivalry. It goes back a long time. Um, it reminds me of the segment we're starting next week. It would have been really good this week. It would have been really good, but we'll have it for you. Don't worry. Um, let's talk about this rivalry between the Bears and the Lions. This game is a must win game in order to find your all too likely scenario of the Lions <clears throat> making the playoffs, right? Yeah, for sure. We make the playoffs if we beat the Bears. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I still, I'm still holding a grudge against one guy on Reddit uh, from this last off season who told me there was uh, that the Lions were clear and away the worst team in the NFC North, and I said, okay, um, I understand that they might be the worst team in the NFC North, but clear in a way like, like like there is no chance at all in your mind that the lions might not be the worst team in the nfc north okay um so no i was very upset about that i i wasn't actually upset about it but um, <laughs> <laughs> um <laughs> but y- you know what i mean you didn't I was know your hands. upset about yeah, it yeah yeah internet upset and so I, I'm holding grudge, and uh, I, I, I'm going to start texting him, uh, sending him messages on Reddit. I can't saying, wait to see okay. the meltdown in their subreddit when we beat them. Because oh, they have been melting down I know, for weeks I know, already. I know. But the Lions' loss is one that is just an extra stinger, and it's just so great. It is so great to watch them just melt. Okay, so let's talk about the things that might happen in this game. That's what we tend to do in podcasts. Uh, let's do that. Right. <laughs> well, right, actually, right. Let, me, let, me, let, me, let me poke you a little here because I like yeah, doing go ahead. that. And, of course, I like asking questions. Um, Mitchell Trubisky, the guy they passed on Patrick Mahomes to pick up. Um, and Sean Watson. And Sean Watson. And they gave away a bunch of cra- capital. In their case, it would be capital, though. Um, Mitch Trubisky, capital. he may have a little bit of a say in this game. In that, how many times he gets sacked or throws interceptions or throws short to the left, right? Yeah. Um, I, it, it actually is the kind of defense that I think he has potential to excel against, but his ceiling is so freaking low that even if, even if he has a good game against us, it's still hard to see him scoring a lot of points. I'm going to just say- um, now. I don't think this is a good defense for him. I think one of the things about the the Lions defense and one of the, and they've and this may be kind of 
illustrative of why our pass rush is the way it is, although I think they expected more, we played a lot of very mobile quarterbacks. Mitchell Trubisky does better when he can get mobile, when he can get out of the pocket and move around. Mm -hmm. Aaron Rodgers, that kind of quarterback as well. That's why I said what I said. Yeah, Yeah. 100%. Well, we do pretty decent with the cover and contain. We do pretty good at keeping that quarterback in the pocket and making us beat him, making him beat us with his arm. And with Mitchell Trubisky... (laughs) I just don't see that happening. If we can keep him in the pocket, he is just, I just don't see him beating us with his arm. Well, no, I don't think he's beat anybody with his arm in a long time. Um, Except himself. (laughs) I feel like there's a lot of bad, terrible jokes in that, and I'm just going to walk away. Um, (laughs) But (laughs) um, (laughs) go ahead. Go ahead. uh, (laughs) Yeah, no, I uh, um, my biggest concern about their offense is actually David Montgomery, because I actually do think David Montgomery is a decent back. And I do think that our despite the fact that I think the uh, what we gave up to Josh Jacobs last week against the Raiders um, is going to look like a statistical anomaly in terms of the how bad it was, you know, which is not to say that I think our our run defense is any good, uh, but we're not going to put up that kind of, we're not going to allow that kind of performance on a week to week basis. Um, I do think that This may be one of the better weeks for Trubisky in terms of the passer rating. But even if it is, even if it is, even if it's still a good week for him compared to his average. There's still no excuse that like there, there's no excuse for not winning this game there that even if he puts up a, like if he puts up a 70 something passer rating, that's like above average for him. Mm -hmm. (laughs) (laughs) That still means, uh, you know, a lot of incompletions and maybe an interception. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, if, the Lions lose this game. This will be the first time this season where I've felt um, betrayed by my bias expectations. Okay. Okay. So that sounds good. So Mitchell Trubisky is who he is. Now let's talk about uh, you went on a podcast out there called the chicago Mm -hmm. audible and god do they need some audibles on their draft picks um they were very nice about me oh i'm sure i'm sure they i'm I'm sure they're wonderful people other than their their professed faith in the chicago bears um Mm -hmm. you talked a little bit about david montgomery in the context of how he helps the the team talk about what you said and then the conversation you had on the podcast uh, about him and, and and the further stuff surrounding that I just think he's very electric. Um, I think that, uh, you know, I, I think Josh Jacobs is better, but I think David Montgomery is probably the second best running back from this last class. Um, and they haven't been able to use him effectively all year. Uh, but I, but as much as I would say the same thing about carry on Johnson, who I think is extremely effective when you give him the opportunity to, I'm not sure the Bears have given David Montgomery the full opportunity to, uh, but I do think he's a three down back. I do think that uh, he is elusive and strong and can catch the ball. Um, He is a scary guy to have in the division. It's too early, way too early in his career for me to suggest that he is a guy that I am like petrified of long term or anything like that. Sure. Because he's on the Bears, he could, you know. I mean, if I said the same thing about Jordan Howard two years ago, we'll look at where we are now with no yeah. Jordan Howard in the division. So, um, but I do think they have a very talented back. I do think they have a lot of talented people on their defensive line. However, I do, I, I, I think, I think that our offensive line can do a good enough job pass protecting against their guys that we can get the ball in, in maybe contested situations to Galladay and Jones 
And uh, obviously, we know both those guys are very good in those situations. So, yeah. Okay. Um, now, you also talked about the Chicago defense, which I think is a pretty interesting uh, group to talk about, right? The, the Chicago defense is the thing that everyone talks about with the Bears. Mm-hmm. Uh, Khalil Mack, obviously, is uh, top of the conversation piece there. Um, where, did, where did your conversation go? And I think it came down. Was that the one that came down to the keys to win for both teams? Well, um, no, but it, it's a situation where, okay, so the Bears are one of the top three defenses in the league last year. DVOA, uh, which is probably my favorite um, statistic, if I'm going to try to boil things down to an oversimplified view of things, mm-hmm. uh, has the Bears this year at number eight on defense. And I think that's fair and accurate. Um, I I think that they are good, but not where they were. It's not the unbeatable, you know, situation. 2018 Bears. Uh, Khalil Mack is still a great player, but he's not playing. It's extremely difficult to play at a uh, elite level from year to year for any player. Um, You know, maybe we see it from quarterbacks from time to time. But even, even if you look at quarterbacks, even if you look at guys like Tom Brady, not every year of Tom Brady's career has been an elite year statistically by any means. Sure. I mean, you can go to the playoffs and look at what he's done there, and that's a, maybe a little bit of a different story. But if you're talking about passer rating, it's not like he's always in the top three of passer rating. Right. That's what's happened with the Bears defense. They are still a lot of really good players, but it's... Uh, it's just not quite the force, the unimpedable force that it was last year. Sure. Um, and, and actually, if you want to look at the Lions, one of the best things that was going on for the Lions defense early in the year was uh, forcing fumbles. And <laughs> last year, we talked about this with the Bears as well, that uh, forcing fumbles is unsustainable. Mm-hmm. And we've also seen that for the Lions defense this year. They, they did a ton of it early in the year. And I'm not saying that it's not a thing that's coachable. I'm not saying it's not a thing that can be uh, from player to player, a thing that some guys are better at than others. I, but it is still a high risk, high, uh, low probability type of situation. Sure. And uh, I want to, I want to tie this back to the lions in a different way because you're seeing the fruits of two different strategies from the front office. Okay. Yeah. You're seeing a win now, buy it rather than build it sort of a, a play in, um, in Chicago. And last year, the addition of Khalil Mack really, really showed itself as how impactful it was for the team. But immediately a year la- later, lacking more draft capital again, uh, had, yep. having traded yep. things away Absolutely. for these players, stuffed on the cap, not being able to really buy too much in the off season. They're in a tough spot and they're not going to get better. They're not going to get better next year with, with their draft picks that they have remaining. They're not going to get better um, with the guys they have, with the cap situation they have. They're not going to get better. Their time is peaking. This is the best Chicago bears you're going to see for three years, probably. Right. Yeah. Uh, and they're going to have to reset mm-hmm. and, and, and refigure things out. And it's going to be a, I pretty much guarantee that by the time they're good again, Nagy will probably be gone. If he's not. Oh, yeah. Oh, if he's, if he's not gone after this year, I'll be surprised. Right. Be right. Right. Okay. So there you go. Versus building a team who's, who's now, right, with, with the roster we have, who's obviously showing better than the Bears, a better team than the Bears as talent. And has been in every single game except one that they've played this year. And has a whole lot of draft capital. Quandre Diggs, it was a controversial trade. That's another pick. That's another piece of the future. This is how you build the team for the long term is, is through the draft like this. And uh, I just think that um, the buy now, uh, pick these guys up. Had we traded Slay, that would have certainly been a selling move. But Slay was probably at his peak value right there. We would probably got most that would ever get out of Slay before this trade deadline right now. Yeah. Um, but we didn't, we stuck with him because we think there, there's still some calculus to be done with this season, with this team. Um, 
I we're not we didn't pick up anybody big either. We didn't waste picks to try to to try to salvage a season on something and throw a bunch of crap capital away um, to try to make something that may not be there yet. And maybe just maybe Bob knows that and Bob has a plan. So um, watch, watch how these teams play out. Watch what happens with the Minnesota Vikings as well. They were big buyers and spent a lot of money on that quarterback, and they got a lot of money in in, in cap tied up right now. That's going to be interesting to see how that falls off and, and, and plays out over the next couple of years. So um, good teams are built to the draft. That's where the, the, the main pieces of the, the teams come from. And uh, I think what you're seeing is a team that had to cycle a lot of pieces of the roster in the Lions and um, – are, are getting closer all the time so i just want to tie those two back together and let people watch the the um the, the the contrast between the teams here from last year to this year to next year and onward all right with that being said case I, I, are you ready to take a little a little jaunt you feel like a little journey i'm gonna do a little uh a little moccasin slow walking because oh yeah i definitely do well how about you take us for a little trip around, around. Oh, oh, this is I was my favorite. So dizzy when I do that. Um, <laughs> my favorite of all of them, man. <laughs> Behind the um, I Prevail one. I love the I Prevail one, but I can't play it all the time. This is my second favorite. I just love that. Don't yeah. have for round line. It's just like, wham, man, it's great. All right, let's yeah. take a round of division. All right, here we go. You, We just did the Bears. We talked about the their upcoming game. Yeah, we don't need to talk too much more about the Bears. Bears. Um, we we can say they suck and uh, be okay with that. They suck. Uh, the, the, the unfortunate thing about this last week, and I think everybody would be feeling a lot different about everything um, if we had won this week because we would have been the only team in the NFC North to win. This is the and second time in a better position. Second but. time this year that this damn team had an opportunity. It was a Green Bay game was the yep. other one to, to take a game and take ownership of where yep. they were and they failed. And that's that is of all the criticisms that they get about oh vanilla defense. Oh, yeah. No, no, else, I completely agree. With that, that is the one that they have to shake and they have to get past. They have to be able to win those big key games that put every that w- when they own their future when they can do that i think that's the point when this is really going to be a, a, a team to talk about for playoffs i and, completely and agree i victory. completely agree um but having said that yeah uh, we're, we're trying to talk about other the other teams of the division okay. uh the packers lost in spectacular fashion to the chargers <laughs> um <laughs> wow uh, a team we beat yeah. now granted you know it, it 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 we played them several weeks ago and and teams change uh over that time but uh boy it certainly puts context to the suggestion that we could beat the packers you look at the raiders them. game and you look at the 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 chargers game for both teams yep. as a comparison and then you look back at that green bay game we played against them when you know there's a lot of referee talk there and i yep. i'm not discounting that at all this time i'm telling you sometimes i'm just like whatever this time the referee actions in that game i feel made a significant change in the outcome i think oh, that yeah. game is no, way way different and the season is way way different even with just that one victory with that one victory oh yeah i completely agree with that um and then we want to talk about the Vikings who lost to Mahomes less Chiefs. Okay. So how fucking awful is it that the same thing happened to us last year where we lost yeah. to a, a Jimmy Garoppolo less 49ers and then uh, every other team in the division got to face that team without their quarterback mm-hmm. and they all beat them. Of course, it's always how it works for us, right? At least, at least this year, and, and I mean, the Packers came away with a win against them, but it was, you know, if Mahomes had been playing, they probably wouldn't have won it. Right, right. I can go. The Vikings come away with a loss to that team without Mahomes. And I have to assume the Bears are going to lose to him. And we I, almost beat sure them they play, with Mahomes. But, this is uh, right, right, right. He talks about that's and, that and is we the close. frustrating thing to me. The timing of when these kind of things happen that is, that is very 
frustrating. And again, because I'm going to go point if back. We had gotten to play. If we had played the Chiefs without Mahomes in that game, we'd want him. Yeah, we'd want. Holy him. shit. <laughs> we'd want. We'd want. We'd want. <laughs> but but you know, I mean, uh, you obviously can't. You know, I mean, but, but I mean, still that's, look at look at how this looks, and when you take the context of all these games. And how our team in that context looks compared to the others in the NFC North, we're totally in the yeah. we're in the conversation. I think we're, that's very important. We're nowhere near the the crap hole of a team that people want to present us as right now, and the fans that are giving up and, and sailing away. We're not so freaking horrible. We just don't have the wins. The wins mean everything. The wins mean everything when it comes down to who's oh, in the yeah, playoffs, what yeah, happens, there, or winning the Super Bowl. Like we've there's said, no there's moral no victories. moral victories yeah. in football. There yeah. isn't. Yeah. So, but, but God dang, you're seeing growth in a team and it's just being thwarted at the, by the silliest, stupid crap. So, sorry, I'm knocking cans around. I'm so frustrated. No, 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 no. I, I'm, I'm, I'm 100% with you on it. Right. Um, I'm not. I, I, how, I don't know how many times I have to say it because I know, I know that there are going to be people out there listening to this who are going to say, oh, you guys are just, you know, you guys are being Slappy. big old homers and there's, you're, you're trying to say there's nothing wrong with this team when we should just throw up our hands and start over again and that kind of thing. That's it, it. It isn't that. It truly isn't that. There are problems, and I see them, and I recognize them, and I hope that they get addressed. But if you want to look at all the things that have happened, it, there's still a lot of bad luck going on. And if you get even a little bit better luck, then you view the whole situation. Everybody views the whole situation very differently. If I want to put my bleakest futurist hat on, this team gets built, gets right to the cusp of greatness, and there's a strike for the CBA, and it blows everything up. <laughs> I uh, that's my I bleak, hate that you're right about that, but I think look. Right about that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. On that wonderful note, we're going to call it a week. Remember, the show needs your involvement. Go ahead and uh, head on over to the subreddit. Give us your comments. Let us know what you think of the show. Let us make it better. Help us. It's a community show. You own it. Let's, let's take let's take some ownership here, people. I'm getting a little frustrated. No. All right. Don't forget us on Patreon. Patreon.com slash Detroit Lions podcast. Patreon.com slash Detroit Lions podcast. Remember, do it by November 12th. You get your chance to get yourself a ticket to Detroit Lions Suite with Sam and I for the Cowboys game. And uh, we'll do the drawing on the 12th. We'll read it out on the 13th on that show that week and let you know who wins. And uh, we're going to bang through some phone numbers and hit those digits fast. So you guys be ready, you Patreon people, if you win, to to claim your prize. Because if you don't, you will lose, I tell you. You understand. All right. Also, uh, check us on Facebook, facebook.com slash the Detroit Lions podcast. Also on Instagram, Detroit Lions podcast on one word. And make sure to follow us on the Twitter machine at DET Lions podcast. Get us. We're like almost 3,000 followers now. This And this is honest, honest stuff. This isn't like follow trains and the other kind of crappy, stupid Breathe your own air crap that people do. This is just real you know, organic stuff. At DET Lines Podcast, follow us. Get us over that 3,000 mark and uh, get your chance to see Case. With extra layers on. If You know what? It, tell you what. When we go over 3,000, I'm going to go dig out of the archives of Case sitting in his, uh, his shorts talking to Zach Zenner. Sitting in his underwear. I, I mean, I can Zenner. find the picture for you anytime okay. you want. Okay, yeah. We'll, we'll keep that. We'll use that as a treat when we go over 3,000. <laughs> also, follow at Case Lions. That's Case's... Uh, uh, Twitter, that's a fun one too. Give us a call via Skype, Detroit Lions Podcast. All one word, Detroit Lions Podcast, or call us on the Lions line at 929 33 Lions. It's 929 335 4667. And be sure to go to DetroitLionsPodcast.com. Subscribe to the podcast. It's on iTunes and all those I- other places, Spotify, um, iHeart, all those things, right? Google Play, I don't know, all that stuff. Go ahead and go there. Get us subscribed so we can come in your ear holes every week. And thank you for tuning in. We're going to see you next time on the Detroit Lions podcast. Remember, no pants, no toasters, no hot tubs. Not yet. No problems, baby, because we're your Detroit Lions and Reddit connection. <laughs>